Last year, more homes canceled cable TV than ever before. Why? It's just too expensive. For half the price of cable, you can get Fubo TV and watch the live sports and TV you love. Try free at FuboTV.com. You're listening to the Armchair GM Sports Network. This is Rod Mahood, your in-game voice of the Niagara Ice Dogs, and you're listening to the Dog Pound Podcast on the Armchair GM Sports Network, your podcast source for all game analysis, team interviews, and up-to-date news regarding the Niagara Ice Dogs. Perlini! Overtime! Ice Dogs win! Hosang! To a kill, Thomas. Thomas has the angle coming in. He! Welcome into another installment of the Dog Pound Podcast, the official podcast of your Niagara Ice Dogs, proudly brought to you by Global Pet Foods, where pets are undeniably part of the family. Visit any four of their great Niagara region locations. Brandon Caputo and Cam Howard are with you to break down the Ice Dogs' tough 2-1 defeat at the hands of Central Division rival Mississauga Steelheads, another low-scoring game between these two teams here at the Meridian Center. And we're going to break it all down. We've got Ben Boudreaux's post game as well as forward Mike Levin as he scored his 16th goal of the season for the Ice Dogs before he leaves uh, for Team Israel at the World U20s. So we'll get to talk to him as well in the post game. So make sure you're following the podcast on X at Dog Pound Podcast. And thank you to those today listening in on demand audio. Give us some love, whatever audio platform that is. So, Cam. General thoughts, the Ice Dogs have been off since last Saturday, that that tough loss against Flint 5-2. Another loss here against the Steelheads and another game that uh, Steelheads goaltender Ryerson Leanders, just like the prior game where I believe it was a 1-0 game with an empty netter for the Steelheads to to open the season against the Ice Dogs here at the Meridian Center. But a a great effort despite, uh, you know, no points. Absolutely. I I felt like uh, they definitely didn't get rewarded for how well they played. But, yeah, I think the Ice Dogs have seen enough of Ryerson Leanders. Uh, this is now our third game, I believe, against the Steelheads this season. And you mentioned the home opener way back in uh, way back in October, or September, September October. And uh, they have four goals in three games, the Ice Dogs do. Uh, it's just, you know, sometimes you run up against goaltenders that you have a hard time solving. And uh, they played great. There was a large section of the second period, well, the entire second period, and a large portion of the third period where they really controlled play, and uh, it looked like they, they were forcing it and uh, just weren't able to get past uh, one of the best goaltenders in the league. And when you talk about the Ice Dogs, I mean, this is a team that is playing three Central Division games this week. They play Mississauga, Barrie, and North Bay, all uh, divisional teams, so you'd expect that it's going to be a tough week, especially when you got to go on the road to Barrie and North Bay, but... Despite the loss, I think you can, if you're head coach Ben Boudreaux, you can chalk this one up as, you know, really good effort. We'll get to him in the post game. Uh, 40 really good minutes in his mind. Just the first period was one that they would want back. Yeah, and honestly, this had the looks of being a really, really ugly game, I think, uh, early on. Because the first 10 minutes, it was really all Mississauga, and they really didn't have an answer. And uh, two... Uh, goals that Flores would definitely I want back, I think, uh, because he, at, right after that he locked down everything for the rest of the game, and, and he was his usual fantastic self. But the, I think the first two goals, especially that first one, always hard to stop a backhand off the rush, uh, but definitely one that was a little bit weaker for him. And then the third or the second one was uh, definitely a shot that uh, he, he more than likely saves in, on most nights. And I got to give credit to the Ice Dogs and the, and the coaching staff for uh, not really wavering. And, you know, usually you could see teams like this get down, get behind early against a really hard to play against goaltender uh, and, and team in Mississauga. And they didn't. They, they really battled back. They didn't really allow many opportunities offensively for the rest of the game after the first 10 minutes of the first. We're going to get more into it with our game stats brought to you by j Flooring. If you think it a better deal anywhere else, you don't know Jack. Contact or Niagara Falls location in your quality flooring project today. The Ice Dogs were outshot 11-10 in the first period. But as you mentioned, the second period was one of the Ice Dogs' better of the season. They were able to get a goal. 
But for, they outshot Mississauga 14-6 to in that middle period. Third period, 11-10 in favor of Mississauga. In total, Niagara outshot the Steelheads 34-28. to Yeah, and in the second period, there was... You, you really saw why Leaners is considered to be one of the highest-rated draft prospects going into this year as, as an 06. Uh, there was a lot of shots in tight that were not that, that he gave up rebounds on because they were just almost impossible to not have a rebound on. But they were handled well, and they, were, they, they didn't allow second and third opportunities. He was kicking it into the corner and, and just remained extremely steady. Uh, just a, a very, very impressive performance. And then I, I will talk about the scoring summary and everything else, but the final 10 seconds of the game, uh, just a couple of great opportunities uh, to tie it late, and uh, he came up huge. So, again, I, I think that we'll, we'll talk more about the, some of the other things, that the, uh, the extracurriculars that happened throughout the game. Um, if this game was to happen five games in, it's a character-building game. You take the, the loss, but I think overall would probably really help the team. Obviously, you know, uh, 40 games in, you don't really want to take an L at any point, and there's really no moral victories at this stage of the season as they really are trying to battle for that, to, to, to remain in the mix. Um, but I think that we saw a lot of character come out of a few players that were especially surprising, at least in one aspect. Yeah, they, there's no margin for error, like you said. They need to pick up points if they want to continue to make a playoff push here. Uh, sitting behind Peterborough and Barry right now, and, and they need to pick up points, like you mentioned. It's just difficult uh, to come away with, with efforts like this and no points uh, when you're really trying to gain some points in the standings. Ro Owen Flores started his 13th straight. We'll get more into him a little in a little bit, but Ben Boudreaux continues to ride with his starting goaltender. As far as the, the man advantage, both teams 0 for 2 tonight on the power play. As far as the Ice Dogs power play setup goes, Power play one was Kevin He, Gavin Bryant, Ryan Robrick up front with Callum Chanowski, the newcomer from Brantford, uh, on the back end with Mike Levin. So four forwards for the Ice Dogs on the uh, power play one. Power play two was Ethan Zada, Alex Asadori, and Matthew Paris up front with Ivan Galianov as the fourth forward and uh, Urban Padrekar. Yeah, no Wysik tonight, so um, Chanowski takes the spot of, uh, of, of Andrew Wysik. But um, really, just... To, um, I thought the second unit actually kind of kind of hummed a little bit, especially uh, down in the second period. I thought the second unit kind of had a little bit more movement. Uh, Paris was really dealing a little bit in 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 his uh, on his units and um, just missed a few opportunities. That's the one sequence I was alluding to where he gave up a couple of rebounds. Leaners did, and he was able to stamp the task, but it was really in tight shots and had a couple of great chances, but just not able to get it done. And the face-offs tonight, 35-29 in favor of the Steelheads, but a better effort for Niagara because the last few games, they've been getting heavily uh, outdueled in the face-off dot. As far as the best ice dogs on the dot tonight, Alex Asadorian, the returning Alex Asadorian, 8 of 13 on the face-off dot, and Gavin Bryant, 10 of 22. We'll talk about the lineup real quick, Cam, because I forgot to mention it at the Open. Alex Asadorian, back in the lineup, has missed a lot of time. That's great for the ice dogs' center depth. Uh, they're going to lose Mike Levin, who's leaving to the U20, so it's good that they got a forward back. Mike Potter, who's still out. But Andrew Wysick, uh was out this week as well. So the Ice Dogs rode with 5D, so they had Artem Frolov with one of those rotating D, and they did a good job for the most part, despite only having 5D, and probably 4 or 3 at some points with the scrums and the fights and the penalties. Well, that's the thing. I think that this team is, is really good. Good defensively. When you can, if you were to go back, I'd love to do the numbers on this. If you were to go back and look at teams that are sitting in last place halfway through the season or a little bit afterwards, how many teams and and what the goals against would be? I would hazard a guess that this ice dog team is probably one of the least ever to be in this position in the standings and and these this least amount of goals. Um, obviously, there's some bad nights, but you would expect a team that's in last to give up a ten spot a lot, much like last year. This team is much more defensive minded they they are very accountable and I'll be honest with you it was a breath of fresh air to watch Alex Asadorian back in the lineup because while he is very fun offensively to watch I always love the fact that he is much like Kevin and the fact that his legs don't stop moving to, no matter what part of his game so there was a sequence I believe it was on four on four there was that four on four sequence I think was in the third period and uh, he had a shot on net and it was it was a good opportunity just went a little high and it kicked right out, and it was a two-on-one, and, for, for, and Frolov was back. And he just head down the whole way, got back, and wiped out the the uh, the far side man for the tap-in. And you just 
you see a lot of players that in that situation, at the end of their shift, put their head down, they glide the last few steps, maybe give up that goal um, or that, that that opportunity. And he's just someone that doesn't stop skating ever. And, again, like I said, breath of fresh air to have him back in the lineup because uh, it, the team is just so much better when he's back in. And with the Ice Dogs with their undermanned D, they still did a, did a great job. I mean, Frolov, he went out there and, and fought. Federico also fought. speak about that for a second? Yeah. Because it, I think that was... Uh, it was so it was behind the play and we were both like ever it felt like everyone in the arena was stunned because we didn't realize it was actually happening um the plays up in the and and him and um Adam Zidlicki. Uh, Adam Zidlicki, Merrick Zidlicki's son. Yep. Uh Adam Zidlicki, uh, they were barking at each other a little bit and this wasn't a uh got into a scrum Someone started throwing it a little bit, got a little too aggressive, and then they both decided to drop the gloves, they're hugging or whatever. This was center ice. Frolov ended like he decided to drop the gloves and, pl- like, not planned, but, like, okay, we'll, we'll, have, we'll have a fight. And I was blown away that he was willing to do that. As Again, at 16, we, we talked about Zada in his, like, third, second game against, uh, against London when he took on Halton in. Um, but th- this was so surprising because he's not – Frolov isn't – Hasn't shown to be extremely physical. He's been very good defensively, and you don't hear his name a lot, which is a good thing. And uh, this was completely out of character, but he stood up to uh, an 18-year-old as a 16-year-old is, is a massive difference. And uh, didn't probably come out on the on the on the on the better side in terms of that if we were scoring it. But I thought that it was unbelievable to watch him step up because he's the future part of the future of this team, and everyone on the bench definitely uh, definitely felt it. So uh, good for him for standing up. Uh, for himself there, and uh, you know, I don't know if I want to see more of that, but it was great to see some emotion. I think that's something too, as well. As we get later in the season, you would expect some guys to maybe coast, you know, and and we're not seeing that at all. Coach Boudreau has him has him moving. No, and and I'm sure Arden Frolov will use that as a learning experience when he goes into his next fight. Absolutely, maybe in a few years. absolutely. That's a, that's a learning curve for him. But again, good on him for for stepping up and and being up to the task. Because he got barked at and didn't say no. That's what that's what I'm saying. Why it was so impressive is because it wasn't just Zada's fight in the second game ever in the OHL. Was they were both just got into a scrum and then it just you know ends up happening. Emotions boil over. This was they were barking at each other and some and he said something to Frolov and he said, "All right, let's go." That was old school hockey it was, right it was, there. And like I said, it, it was so far behind the play that when it started happening, everyone was like, what is going on here? <laughs> uh, so, uh, again, good good for him. Absolutely. And I'll ask uh, Coach Ben Boudreau about that in the post game as well. We'll get to our scoring summary tonight brought to you by the Niagara Employment Help Center, helping people find work in Niagara since 1983. Check out their up-to-date job board at ehc.on.ca to find your next work opportunity today. The, the Steelheads opened it up really early, 151 into the first period. Dean Locust cuts down the left wing, cuts towards uh, Owen Flores, and a backhand that I think maybe caught him off guard because of where he placed it, but uh, that's one that Owen Flores... Yeah. A, for a few games it's a weird angle, yeah, but... Backhands are always very difficult to stop it's because you have really no idea where they're going to go, um, but it definitely was one of the weaker ones, I think, and um, it was a tough start given that you know that you're not going to be able to put up six against Leanders. And then at 15.06, the Steelheads extended their lead with another one that, Ry- that not Ryerson Leanders, Owen Flores will want back. Mark Boudreau kind of cuts towards the right side of the half wall there and just kind of took a wrist shot. And I think there was a couple of bodies in front, and it just kind of got past Flores' short side. And, again, we've seen Owen Flores make some unbelievable saves. Yeah. So I'm sure he would even he would definitely want both those back because we know he's capable of stopping both of those. Well, like I said, after those two goals, he didn't allow another goal for the rest of the night. If yep. you if you backstop your team to two goals against in the OHL, yep. most nights you are going to win. So not on him. Again, nope. obviously I think that uh, the second one, or the, the first one's tough, but the second one he probably wants back. But, uh, again, you can't fault him in this game um, because after that he locked it down and uh, the team definitely responded because of it. Yeah, he didn't let in a goal after 15:06 of the first period, so Owen Flores uh, kept him in that game. The Ice Dogs' lone goal tonight came at the 14:53 mark of the second period. Again, the Steelheads were doing a good job of limiting the time and space for the Ice Dogs, but Mike Levin with one of his signature moves where he cuts into the middle of the ice, kind of stutter steps, waits a little bit, stick handles, and then goes roof, uh, assisted by Urban Padrekar and Kevin Heath for his 16th of the season. First of all, absolutely perfect shot. Like we we've, we've talked about leaders a lot already on the on the on the broadcast and that's or on the on the show and obviously um you know you have to have a great shot to beat him and this was just under the bar upstairs just a shooter shot uh, and a fantastic one. I got to say, I don't know how he keeps getting open in the slot 
I, you know, I, I don't. I have no idea how he does it. I talk about this every game. He will. Levin will find a way to slowly skate into the middle and have what feels like five seconds. And if you count to yourself five seconds in your head in the middle of the ice for a shot on goal, you'd be blown away at how he manages to do that and not get roughed up. But he continues to do it. I don't know how he, s- he sneaks in there. But, uh, again, just a great goal from him. Uh, as that was an absolute pick shot upstairs. And then... I believe it was after, correct me if I'm wrong, the second period, where, or right at near the end of the second period. Eight seconds ago, Gavin Bryant. Gavin had Bryant a, rips the post on a 2-1-1. I think one. it was a 2-1-1 on one with yep. Robrick, if memory serves. And, uh, yeah, he beat he beat Leanders, and it just rang right off the bar with about eight seconds to go. And that kind of cap that kind of ended uh, the, a second period in which they just dominated. It, I don't even know if uh, Flores I mean, had made six saves, I think it was, in the second period, but it didn't feel like any of them were uh, memorable at all. Like, uh, the Ice Dogs had a, just an unbelievable performance. I would love to see a game in which they play like that all three periods. We talk about this a lot every time we have, um, you know, we do a re- recap, and sometimes it's the first, sometimes it's the second, and then they let off the gas in the third, or sometimes it's the second and third. It seems to be that there's always at least one 10-minute section of a game in which they really just get hemmed in their own zone, and they have some maybe sloppy breakouts, and then the rest of it, they they look like a playoff team. And, um, you know, as we go along here, I think they'll work out some of the kinks. They, again, the, the good thing is is about the roster, just taking a look at it after the trade deadline, is that a lot of these guys are going to be back, right? And and we've talked about this, about them. The, the team finally feels like it has some stability. And, um, you know, again, they're still playing meaningful games. They're seven points back still of a playoff spot. And while that is still probably a long shot, it all starts with Barry, which is coming up. And they win that one, and it's, you know, it gets even more interesting. So... Um, tough one tonight, but uh, still just a great performance. And do you want to touch up on the ending there when they had the goalie pulled and had a few good chances in tight there? Yeah, but I, I kind of want to touch on eight minutes before that because uh, there was a four-on-four, four and Kevin almost scored, and he was at, they were out there for like two minutes. It, just, it was one of those ones where they just had an end-to-end rush, and there was no time to change. And Kevin took a big hit in the corner uh, by, I believe it was Leskovar. Um Oh, sorry, Zabeski for from from Mississauga, and uh, Federko took exception to that. Kevin was so gassy; he just kind of sat there for a second, and you could tell that that's very much not like him. Um, but it was like a two, and it was end to end the whole shift. Federko came and just gave him the business, and this is what I was talking about: how if this was the fifth game of the season, that this loss would seem a little bit different because of the the moral victory and the and the the team win uh, in the locker room. But Federko took exception, handled his business, fought Zabeski right there, uh, and it was a pretty pretty good performance by him. Uh, stood up for his teammate and, uh, you know, really made him answer the bell for that. And I think that that's a, a great thing to see that uh, we, we still got guys standing up for each other regardless of where they are in the standings. But then, yes, the final rush, um, I think it was Levin and Azadorian both had great opportunities, uh, unfortunate too, and, and I believe Robrick had a partial break that was stopped with a kind of a spread eagle. Just frustrating. Like at some sometimes you just get goalied. That and that doesn't just happen in the OHL. It happens in all all hockey. And that's what it felt like tonight. And just a few one last chance just kind of went wide. You know, those yep. are the bounces that you know the hockey gods might give you if you're you're battling for uh, you know a playoff spot and mm-hmm. and it's just you know just an inch here and there. But mm-hmm. uh, the Ice Dogs came out on the wrong end tonight. I mean, nothing against. I mean, like again, this is the third game in Mississauga. They've scored four goals in three games. Right, so um, we'll see. I know they play them again, I believe, relatively soon in the schedule, but um, we'll have to see who's in there for that one. Yeah, they play the Steelheads again on February 23rd. 23rd, so in, okay, so in about a month. Okay. Yep. So we're going to get more post-game reaction from head coach Ben Boudreau as well as Mike Levin and Cam's player of the game as always. So stay right here. We're right back on the Dog Pound Podcast, the official podcast of your Niagara Ice Dogs, probably brought to you by Global Pet Foods, where pets are undeniably part of the family. In the Niagara region, Global Pet Foods is your destination for premium pet nutrition and caring expertise. Whether you've welcomed a new furry family member or need advice on top quality nutrition, their dedicated staff is ready to help. Discover why Global Pet Foods' lesser-known premium brands outshine the big corporate names. Their team's passion ensures your pet's health and vitality. Check out one of their locations today, 3643 Portage Road in Niagara Falls, 160 Highway 20 in Font Hill, or 400 Scott Street and 344 Glendale Avenue in St. Catharines. Global Pet Foods, where premium brands and caring staff make the difference. 
Wild Bill's Auto Repair is your local center for auto maintenance and repair in the Niagara region. Since 2012, Wild Bill's Auto Repair and Body Shop has been helping customers stay safe and confident on the road, knowing their vehicles in top running condition through their services. Located at 7868 Oakwood Drive in Niagara Falls, the garage started as a tribute to the owner's father, William Robert Hunter, who passed away, continuing the same community spirit and high level of service which customers came to expect from him back at Hunter's Auto Repair. Their multi-award winning auto shop has earned the trust of the Niagara community with its fair treatment of all customers who can feel confident they'll get the trustworthy advice and repairs during their visit. Their experienced crew loves meeting new people and looks forward to forming a lasting partnership for the care of your cars. To find out more or to book a service, contact them today. 905-358-7868 or wildbillsauto.ca. Wild Bills Auto Repair, helping customers stay safe and confident on the road since 2012. Since 1999, Niagara Dental Clinic has been helping thousands of patients achieve natural-looking smiles with the confidence to show them off. Sean Battelle and his wife Anne, both licensed denturists, bring a wealth of skill and experience to the warm and friendly atmosphere to their Niagara Falls location at 5501 Drummond Road. And their on-site Niagara Hearing Clinic offers free hearing tests and a variety of services to fit your needs. This family-run practice takes pride in providing superior care and service to their patients, along with the best premium products available on the market. Get the best work done at a more reasonable price. Niagara Dental Clinic is here to help. Protect your teeth with a mouth guard, replace missing teeth, and get better hold with your dental implants. Call them today for a free consultation at 905-353-1552 or check them out online at NiagaraDentureClinic.com. Niagara Dental Clinic. Creating natural smiles in the Niagara region for 25 years. JNL Flooring is Niagara's specialty flooring and design company. They take great pride and provide elite customer service and support. With a beautiful showroom, great pricing, and a wide variety of truly unique products, JNL Flooring is your specialty flooring and decor boutique shop. All of their products are environmentally friendly and responsibly produced so you can feel good about your flooring choices. Their goal is to build authentic relationships based on honesty and integrity that they foster with respect and authenticity. Offering a unique and wide range of quality products presented by a knowledgeable and patient team, they simplify the process to make your life easier and to make your home more beautiful. Visit them at 4424 Montrose Road in Niagara Falls or find out more at jnlflooring.com. If you think you can get a better deal anywhere else, you don't know Jack at JNL Flooring. This is Alex Asadorian. Hey, it's Ryan Roberg. Bronson Ride. This is Gavin Bryant. And you're listening to the Dog Pound Podcast. The official podcast of the Niagara Ice Dogs. Welcome back to part two of today's Niagara Ice Dogs game recap. Right here on the Dog Pound Podcast, the official podcast of your Niagara Ice Dogs. Brandon Caputo and Cam Halbert are with you. Breaking down the Ice Dogs 2-1 defeat at the hands of the Mississauga Steelheads tonight. A close one here at the Meridian Center in front of just shy of 4,000 for uh, the ranking cancer run and the specialty jerseys. Cam, quick thoughts. Uh, Charlie Robertson's jersey went for 3,300 local product. And a couple other jerseys also uh, uh, went for around five hundred dollars. So a great cause tonight uh, for the cancer run, and you know, great pregame ceremony. And the Ice Dogs always do a good job uh, with these specialty jersey nights and the causes as well. Absolutely, it's always a great night. I mean, even as a fan last year, um, I was here at the um, as a season ticket holder last year for the for the Rank Cancer Run, and it's it's a it's a fantastic. Um, fantastic night, and uh, definitely uh, props to everyone who stayed for the Jersey auction to, to donate um, to a great cause, and uh, I'm sure it's going to continue for, for many more years. With that said, we're going to take you to our post game with Ice Dogs head coach Ben Boudreau, as always brought to you by Wild Bill's Auto Repair, helping customers stay safe and confident on the road in Niagara since 2012. In honor of the late William Robert Hunter, here is Ben Boudreau following the 2-1 loss to the Mississauga Steelheads. What was the message to the guys after that one? After the first period? No, after, after, the, the, game. after the game. Oh, very proud of their effort. I mean, 
you know, collectively, the effort was there. Uh, we outshot them, we outchanced them, we outplayed them. I just thought that was a good goalie on the other side that won them the game. But at the same time, we had to learn a lesson because we played 40 out of 60 minutes. And you need to play 60 minutes yeah. in order to win a hockey game, especially when you're thin. So we came out and we did not start the game well. Uh, we were lazy in our details. We didn't play as a team. And it took a little bit of a boot in the rear end after the first period okay. to get them uh, up, to, up to speed here. And... Then you saw for the last 40 minutes how we can take over our game and, and play as a team, but we needed to make sure that we're coming out of the gates like that. And yeah. when you look back and you say, well, we've got to learn from some of the things that we did, and that's got to be a learning lesson. If you don't play 60 minutes, if you're not ready to start yeah. the game, you're not giving yourself a chance to win. And, you know, for, for all the good stuff, we won two out of three periods uh, for the most part, but it wasn't enough at the end of the day. And, uh, you know, that was a start that ended up costing us. They gotta get, I guess that's got to be particularly frustrating because that's a game you can win. Right? It's yeah. not like you ended up losing 6-1 or something. You, you can win that game with yeah. that 60. So is that a message too? It's like we just you know gave away two points. Well, those are things that our kids got to understand. I mean, it's the same thing. It's a long-term plan with, with these messages. But if you're a 16-year-old and you go through a loss like that and as important as it is to win and you say, oh, if I just would have come to the rink different or been yeah. a little bit sharper from the get-go, maybe we could have done something right there. And those are the little mistakes that ended up costing us. And with that message, you hope that they learn it now rather than waiting for the next two years to be able to undercover uh, you know what's really going on so um, I, I give a lot of credit to our defense we played 5D um, even the, the forwards we didn't have every single forward going tonight but the ones that were were competing and playing hard and um, you know we had a chance all the way right up until uh, 10 seconds ago we had an opportunity yeah, to score so sure. um, again we're resilient uh, we don't uh, pack it in but I, I thought we could have been better from the start and that first period was one that we'd like to have back. Sure. Uh, Mike Levin got a goal for you. He's put together a very nice season. Just tell me what he brings to the team for you guys. He brings the offense. Uh, there's no question. Yeah. I mean, he's for for a little guy. He brings a lot of things in a big package, you know. So um, he has vision and he can really think the game with details. And you know, that's something that we don't have a lot of. It's just <clears throat> pure hockey sense guys. And so you know, even though he's undersized uh, a, a little bit, he gets to the right place and he get or gets to the right places, gets to the right areas, and that's why I end up scoring. And and the one thing I love that a lot of people don't recognize is how coachable is he is. is okay. He'll take details and he'll apply them in a game. If he makes a mistake, he wants to know why, and then he wants to go out and correct it on the next shift. Uh, the guy's a hockey player, if, if that makes sense. Not just because he laces on his skates and puts a stick in his hands, but he thinks the game, he prepares the same way, and he's one of those guys that you know he's going to be emotionally invested and wears his heart on his sleeve, and as a coach, you can trust a player, and you can put up with his mistakes for everything that he gives you on the other side. So um, a guy like uh, uh, Mike has been a has uh, been a boost in the arm for our offense, and Absolutely. he's been very consistent, especially over the last 13 games. I think he's averaging at about a point a game, which is something that we don't have on our roster right now. So he's the one guy you can circle and highlight and say, uh, you know, he's inside our top six, but it didn't come easy. He's played on the fourth line. He's played on the third line. He's even been on the fifth line when we had enough bodies to start the year. So um, a lot of credit where credit is due, and now he's off to represent his home country, yeah, uh, which I think is a pretty cool event for him. For sure, yeah. You had some time leading up to these two games, or leading up to the game. You had, what, five, four or five days off. Yeah. So how do you, like at this point, how do you kind of go through that? Because you want to give guys rest, but you got to take advantage of the practice time too, yeah. right? So how do you balance that? Well, Saturday uh, we had the community event. Sunday we rested the bodies, and then okay. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday we have uh, three practices in there with with our entire team and the structure. And you have to, you don't have to uh, overkill the guys, but I mean, 50 minutes of good system, yeah. systematic work, and you can't change your systems from one weekend to one week out, depending on what the other team is doing. You want to dictate how you play the game and make them adjust. So our focus has been squarely on how we need to play and and uh, the things that make us successful and like you said you don't see the the big blowouts anymore but uh, for the group that we have right now to make sure we're in one goal games and being competitive that's really important that's a product of of building this uh, this team up here for the last sure. two two months to get to here thank you very much thanks Bill appreciate it with Levin leaving for the U20s, just uh, talk about obviously his goal scoring ability, but how are you going to fill his spot while he's gone? Do you plan on you know hoping that any guys are get called up because you're already down a couple of skaters right now? So how do you kind of see foresee that going, or and how is the rotation going to work? Well, as far as uh, you know, filling the roster spots, you put your trust in your faith and uh, your management, and hopefully that they have a game plan to uh, fill those spots. We're going to lose Levin for a minimum of five games, and we've got uh, one guy short on the back. 
back end and uh, you know if you lose anybody else you're you're in a pretty big hole and we don't want to go back to those days in November where we're going to Michigan and only dressing nine and four so uh, that's where you put your trust in the management to have a plan in place and that's something that we've discussed and uh, we got 100% faith in those guys so I'm sure we'll get back to the paperwork tomorrow and figuring out what we got to do to be ready for the weekend. And just talk about Frolov, you know, going up against Zidlicki, a couple years older, a veteran, uh, and, you know, not not being afraid to drop the gloves there as a 16-year-old. I know, you know, at that point in the game, you're down a goal, so you're trying not to go shorthanded there. But just talk about, were you happy with the way that the guys responded to fights and jumping in there to, to help each other out and making sure that they left all their emotions on the ice? I absolutely loved the response from our guys. You know, Federkow going over, uh, j jumping in when Kevin He got hit from behind. I absolutely loved that. But, you know, when I got in my first professional fight, even at five foot nine, I made sure I found somebody that was smaller than me uh, to give myself a fighting chance. Froley didn't get the memo when he chose the toughest guy in the other team as a 16-year-old to get on his first fight at center ice, but surprised at how well he did. And uh, it, was, it was great to see because, you know, that takes a lot of guts right there, a lot of guts. It's not easy to step in, but uh, you saw the confidence in his game when he came back and realized it wasn't life or death after getting in a fight. And I think it's only going to bode well for him going forward, but very, very impressed with his ability and his confidence to step up and do something like that with an older, tougher opponent. And Flores, you probably want those two goals back, but other than those two goals, he really kept you guys in the game. When Mississauga started pressuring in that third period, you know, you guys had a great second period, outshot them 14-6, but uh, just talk about your goalie coming back after, you know, two that he'd probably want back along with you guys. You know, it was great. Um, he played 40 great minutes, but unfortunately as a coach, you remember those two goals rather than the big saves and the breakaways that he made. It's, we're, you're definitely right. We want those two goals back, and uh, they were savable goals, and at the end of the day, I mean, I thought their goalie played well enough to win the game and as good as Flores did it was one goal less than the opponent so we need our guys to be at their absolute best there's not a big room or margin for error right now and that you see we had two bad goals in a bad first period and it was enough to cost them the game no matter how well we played um, their goalie found a way to stop the puck so at the the end of the day uh, we you know average is good and good is good but we need guys to be great we need them to be the best on the ice and we need everybody at the same time to, to pull that way so we can win some more hockey games. And lastly, just quickly about the decor, obviously Wysik was out tonight and then when Frolov and Federko both fought, you're down to 4D at that point. So just talk about maybe the new guy a little bit, Chanowski, what you've thought of his play so far in that uh, rotation and how you thought that the other four guys did. Yeah, well, I mean, we got down to 3Ds at a, at a moment there and we had Kevin Klein go back and, uh, you know, Chanowski coming back to the bench and just want to make sure he's got enough oxygen to breathe because he's never seen minutes in the OHL like the way he did tonight. But it's a good sign that, that you can play that many minutes and, and still continue to have success doing it. So I think he's going to be a really good player for us. He, he makes some really nice plays. He puts the puck on the tape and it was a good addition. Good job by our management identifying a, you know, a weakness on our back end and going out and getting a young player that we can grow and build with. Uh, and on top of that, he's a local product. So checks a lot of boxes for us and we're really proud and happy to have him here. Thanks, Coach. Thank you, guys. Ice Dogs head coach Ben Boudreau back on the Post game, Wild Bills out of repair. Post game, Cam, that was interesting from the Ice Dogs head coach. Yeah, I don't know well, where you want to start with this one. I want to, I want to give a shout out to Chanowski first, the the newcomer, because I think he played a very good game. Um, I really like what I see from him as far as the way that he skates. I think he's a very smooth skater, and he mentioned how much ice time he had. He never really had any that much ice time when he played in Brantford. He was, you know, an extra defenseman here and there. Got in the lineup on the third pair. But I really like uh, that pickup of, of Callum Chanowski and already kind of fill in the shoes of Danil Sobolev as far as how many minutes he was logging. And again, when you're, you're stepping in for an overage import that was so valuable like Sobolev, um, you know, Chanowski's learning, on, lear <laughs> he's getting the hands-on experience on the job right now. I thought he looked great. And I think that some players will step up when they feel like they're being more uh, relied upon, especially when you're in a role. A uh, perfect example would be Galliano at the beginning of the year. Right, if you're viewing yourself as like you know a tweener, or you're like you know your your third line in and out of the lineup, and then you have a coach come in and say, "All right, we're gonna need you to play like 25 minutes tonight." And as the game goes along, and your name is getting called to go over the boards again, you got to step up. You'll see a lot of guys have performances that you would normally wouldn't see out of them simply because they gain confidence as the game goes along. And Chanowski looked great. I, I was about to say, well, when he brought up that quote, that he was probably the person I noticed the most when just watching the like, chasing the play. 
uh, either had the puck or was going up against the player with it. So uh, uh, a great job by uh, by him tonight, and uh, it, it's good to see again another local product uh, make make uh, a good name for himself here. And we were wondering what head coach Ben Boudreaux's thoughts were going to be about the response when Federico jumped in yeah. for Kevin He. I know you were really interested in hearing that. Well, it's okay. For again, this is if you were just watching the box score and you, and you weren't watching the game. There's a that that why I mentioned why it was a good team bonding win or loss was that that hit happens. There's no call on the play originally, and Kevin falls down, and again he's so out of gas, and then Federico comes in and labels. Uh, Zabeski and gets called and then immediately drags him into a fight. And nothing wrong with that. Absolutely not. Coach loved it. Great. The problem was there was eight minutes left in the game. They were down by one. And what it looked like when that originally happened was, okay, you just great response, but you're trying to make the playoffs and you just put your team down two minutes with a, with a, with a one goal deficit, right? However, I think <laughs> there were some calls that were not – that, that did not happen, and after that, after the brawl, uh, they called Zabeski on roughing on Kevin He as well. So it ended up being fantastic because Federico comes in, uh, sticks up for Kevin, which was a great showing, and dragged the other two minutes out of Zabeski, and it was a four on four. And that was the, that couldn't have gone any better in that situation for what happened, other than Kevin getting boarded, uh, obviously. But um, the the takeaway I hear from that is that. I think in the landscape of not just not just the OHL, but hockey in general, right? You can shy away from the tough stuff and, and things like that. It's the only sport where you can legally answer the bell, essentially, you know, and you can't go over the top with it. Obviously not. These are and not to mention in 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 the OHL, like it's kids for the most part, right? So you can't go over the top. But when you see your your teammate, your buddy, your the the guy that you're you're going on the road with all the time get crushed from behind, you can go and make sure that he is aware that he's not going to be allowed to do that anymore. And some coaches you hear aren't not promoting that, but Ben standing up and saying he loved that response. I personally, as a fan, love to hear that. And. He mentioned Owen Flores and the way that he was able to play a strong 40 minutes there after two goals that he'd want back. And again, he's hard on his starting goaltender because he believes that he can really take another step here as an elite goaltender. And and obviously, you know, he's he's hard on his hardest player. We've seen him be hard on Gavin Bryant, Kevin He, Ryan Robrick at times. So I think the way when, when Ben Boudreau really gets on some of these players is because he expects excellence from them at all times and he just wants to kind of push them to always be great. From an outsider standpoint, it's he does seem awfully hard on Flores, who has been the team's MVP on most nights. Um, but I'll say this. He backs it up with his roster and who, he's, who his starting lineup is. He started, what, 13 games in a row? 13th tonight. If he was really up, obviously he wants those goals back. Every coach would. The, Flores wants those goals back. But he, if he starts again, like you know, he's not getting benched, and he's not he's not losing starting time. He is the one that they trust the most in in a very important section of the season to potentially save their season. So, you know, while what he's saying is sounds like he doesn't, uh, he's extremely hard on him. You're exactly right. Flores is probably the biggest competitor on the team. Again, if you come to the games and you're watching him, he is fiery. Like, it, gotta be one of the most aggressive goaltenders when you get in and around his crease. Like, he will. He will hammer you and get you away from him or get in it, with whether it's the guys that are right in front of him or guys on the bench. So he definitely wants to play every game, and he's getting the opportunity to, and it isn't like we don't have a capable backup. Uh, like Charlie Robertson was, was pretty good and, and going to be here for a little while. Like He is not a, he is not a uh, body on the bench. Robertson's a very talented goaltender, and at some point we're going to see quite a bit of him. I would, I would probably guess that they go 50-50 at some point. If depending on how the season goes, if if it doesn't play out well and we get down to the final twenty games and playoffs aren't really an option or, or a possibility, we probably start to see it a little bit. Just because I, I mean he's got to be getting close to setting the record for most games played in the season <laughs> at this point. So, uh, but no, he he definitely the the first period was uncharacteristic uh, of Owen, um, but the rest of it was classic Owen Flores. I would be shocked if we didn't see Charlie Robertson start in North Bay on Sunday. That would be my guess. Yeah, I, I could I would I could definitely see that for sure. We'll get to our Ice Dogs player interview tonight, brought to you by the Niagara Dental Clinic, creating natural smiles in Niagara for 25 years. If you forgot your mouth guard on the ice or lost a chiclet, contact your licensed team of dental professionals in Niagara Falls to get your smile back on track. It is with Ice Dogs goal scorer Mike Levin as he departs for Israel at the World U-20s. 
Back in the post game with Ice Dogs forward Mike Levin. Mike, 16th goal of the year. You've obviously been a consistent goal scorer right now. You know what, What's really working for you, and, and why have you been able to, to gain so much consistency and earn the trust of more playing time with this coaching staff? Yeah, like like I said, I got lucky with the, the coaching staff. Uh, got lucky with the players. And just, uh, still getting used to each other as a team. And uh, I think moving forward, we're going to be we're gonna be fine. You're leaving for uh, Bulgaria for uh, the U20s for Israel. Just talk about, obviously, you played there last year, but uh, getting the honor again, just how, how much pride and, and you know, uh, excited are you to play for your country once again? Yeah, I'm very excited. Very excited to, to see my friends that I grew up with, see some of my family, and uh, hopefully coming back with a gold. Yeah, very excited. Have they been keeping tabs on you in the OHL, trying to keep up on, on the way that you're playing and, and, and uh, you know, being able to just be there for you and, and be a support system? Yeah, of course. The, the support was amazing all the time, every, every second. And just looking forward to get the goal and come back and keep playing here. Let's talk about tonight. Obviously, it was uh, not the result you want, but you guys played a solid game against a really good team over there. Obviously, high emotions, some some fights, a lot of stuff after the after the whistle. Just uh, what what did Coach Ben Boudreau say to you guys after the game about uh, about an effort like that against a team that you're obviously trying to catch? Yeah, of course, uh, it's not the result that uh, we wanted, but um, I think our team we, we had a okay game, a tough first period, but uh, the next 40 was uh, good. Just tough, tough loss, tough loss. Mike Levin, 16th goal of the year. Congratulations. Best of luck for Team Israel and look forward to seeing you when you're back. Thank you. Thank you. There was Ice Dogs forward Mike Levin on the Niagara Denture Clinic post game. Wish him all the best as he leaves for Team Israel. But the Ice Dogs are going to miss him, Cam. 16 goals and a guy when he came over from London didn't really know what to expect from him. Had a, was good in, in the lower uh, division last year. Uh, but you didn't know what he's going to be like at the OHL level, and he's proving that uh, whatever the Ice Dogs management and scouting staff saw on him, it's, it's working. It, it's funny. I was just thinking about this while while he was while he was talking. He is someone that is very very easy to like as a fan. He reminds me a lot for any of like the the older Ice Dog fans that have been following the team. Like we, I talked about this earlier, he reminds me of Kean Sopa, who was a smaller guy. He would put pucks on net, and he was not afraid of anyone. And Levin has got to be one of the smaller guys on the team. But he's scrappy. And he is, he's is he been like three fights. <laughs> and it's all like and he just does not like anyone barking at him. And it's sometimes it's funny to see because he gets so mad. He's so intense. Um, and, again, he beat, he, his shot tonight was not a trickler that just fell in. That was a just an absolute missile wrister that beat one of the best goaltenders in the OHL. And he has had... A great season and one of the one of the bright spots. Um, again, when we talk about all the transactions that have happened over the last few years, um, haven't necessarily always won them. And uh, not that you know, it's a very good one, very very good one. And Mike Levin, we this isn't a fluke. He scored goals like this uh, all season long. So. I uh, wish him all the best. He's going to be gone for about four or five games, so the Ice Dogs will have to fill his shoes until he's gone. Hopefully he comes back with more confidence uh, if Israel is able to win gold. So before we get out of here, we're going to put Cam on the spot, as always, with our Player of the Game, brought to you by the Niagara Golf Lounge, Niagara's home for golf and sport year-round, located in the Best Western Karen Croft Hotel in Niagara Falls. Visit NiagaraGolfVacations.com to learn more to host an event. We're going to book your golf bay today. Cam, who do you got? It is uh, Mike Levin. Uh, again, he the only goal for the for for the Ice Dogs tonight. He had a couple of opportunities um, to to tie it up, just bare, narrowly missing. Uh, a, a great game for him. I also want to give a quick shout out to to Alex Asador, and again, I, I think that uh, his work ethic and um, just ability to, to keep grinding out plays is something that we sorely missed. And uh, finally, Federico uh, will always want to give a shout out to someone who stands up for a teammate like he did tonight. And uh, no surprise as he uh, continues to be one of the Best players to watch this season. And unfortunately, we don't get time on ice, but I want to give a shout-out to Chanowski because yeah. he was out there all night long for I'd the Ice Dogs. I'd love to see that. I would love to see the, the time on ice but for that. really like wha- what he's going to bring to the Ice Dogs, acquiring him from the Brantford Bulldogs. Speaking of that, that's going to be our next game recap recording after next Thursday's game right here at the Meridian Center for another battle between the Dogs with the Bulldogs coming into town to face the Ice Dogs, the return of Zach Lavoie and Daniil Sobolev as well. Cam, thanks for doing this, and hopefully the Ice Dogs can pick up some points over the weekend. Absolutely. Big weekend coming up. That's going to wrap up another Niagara Ice Dogs game recap right here on the Dog Pound Podcast, the official podcast of your Niagara Ice Dogs. Proudly brought to you by Global Pet Foods, where pets are undeniably part of the family. Visit any four of their great Niagara region locations. Make sure to give us some love, whatever audio platform you listen to us today on demand, and give us a follow at Dog Pound Podcast as well. Check 
check out our website, armchairgmsports.com, for our latest articles on our website. So for Cam Halbert, my name is Brandon Caputo. We're going to bid adieu to you, and we'll talk to you again next Thursday following the Ice Dogs game against the Brantford Bulldogs. We'll talk to you then.